Why you ever chose me? As long as you know it's time. It is time to get that cup of coffee, grab your Bibles, grab your journals, and let's get this Monday kick started right off. Let's do it. Let's get this week going, y'all. Come on in. It is time for the chat, folks. I am glad to see y'all this morning. So glad to see y'all. I hope you've had a great, great weekend. Had a great weekend around here at the pastor's house. Lots and lots of studying going on. I had been church yesterday. Worked out in my yard yesterday afternoon. So it has been a glorious weekend around here for us. I hope that you have had a good day as well. When you get on this morning, we want to encourage you to say hello. Let us know that you are going to hang out with the pastor this morning and going to drink a little bit of coffee, going to to just chit-chat a minute and all that good stuff. And then I want you to go ahead and hit this share button this morning. That's what gets our ministry out a little farther, a little faster. Come on in, y'all. It is a gorgeous day here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta, and it is going to be hot. H-A-W-T. It's going to be hot. We are under a heat advisory. We're under a heat advisory through Thursday. Is that right, Denise? Through Thursday at 8 o'clock. So it is going to be uh, four days of smoking hot, y'all. Four days. It is warm. Come on in here. If you go outside, you've got to be careful. If you work outside, you've got to take breaks. You've got to drink lots of, uh, of fluid, drink lots of water. you got to stay hydrated because it is some kind of bodacious hot out there. It was warm on me yesterday. The heat index was in the triple digits while I was outside uh, yesterday. And, uh, I, boy, I felt every bit of it. Let me just say, cause I got my entire yard mowed yesterday. I, you know, I've tried to got to where I would uh, push mow on one day and then I would ride the next day, but uh, I just haven't had the time. So I was out all day yesterday. Uh, and that was after a full morning on the church campus. And I uh, said, what was it, Denise? About six hours in the yard yesterday. About six hours yesterday outside in that heat. So I definitely took all kinds of time to um, to to catch my, my breath, to rest, and to drink lots of water. Denise is so good. She takes great care of me and uh, uh, lets me uh, get get lots of uh, fluid, lots, lots of water, lots of snacks. And so I do definitely get, uh, get plenty of breaks. So uh, I want to encourage you guys to do the exact same thing. If you get out today, work in the yard, you might want to time that dude just about right. Hey, folks, get in and say hello. As soon as I get over there, we'll chit-chat and see who all is hanging out with us this morning. And that's all I'm doing right now is I am sharing, getting it out there, getting it out there. Y'all, how is everybody this morning? Did y'all have a good weekend? Did y'all have a good church? Boy, I'll tell you something. We had a rip romping, stomping time at Ridgewood yesterday. We just had a great day. I, I mean, just a great, great day yesterday. Uh, the book of James, I'm, I'm not I'm not even going to lie, y'all. The book of James is just in your face, just just smacking you around. And and uh, the thing is, is that he's doing it all with love. You know, that's what I said yesterday, just, just uh, beating you to death with it. But he's, at least he's doing it in love. So, you know, praise the Lord for that. Mm. Oh, yeah, man, I'm almost there and we can chit chat. See you all is here. Looks like we've got a good crowd this morning. Uh, you've got time to uh, tag your friends. You've got time to text them, really, if you just want to do that. Um, but please, please go ahead and hit that share button for us. We want to make sure that uh, your friends and family have the opportunity to join us this morning as well. And also, just to kind of help us uh, set that, uh, that algorithm for Facebook this morning, go ahead and hit that heart button right now. Hit that heart button. Let's light it up, y'all. Hit that hot button. Let's light it up. Let's get that thing going. All right, I'm here. I am in. Who all is here? There is Mary Mary Weddington. Mary Weddington. Your post this morning. That's all I'm going to say. You about hung the preacher out again this morning. Mary Weddington takes this gorgeous picture, okay? And there's this flower. And there's her sign. She got Jesus right outside her door. Her big sign says Jesus. Okay. And then she's posting this gorgeous picture. And then, and then here's the caption. You ready? It says, a naked lady shows up in my yard this morning. And I'm like, come on. 
Come on, y'all can't be doing that to the preacher, especially on a Monday morning when I'm trying to get things rocking and rolling. Good God, Mary Wagington, shame on you for doing that this morning. Who else we got on here? Mary Wagington, let's see here. There is Pam, good morning. Debbie Tacker, good morning. Debbie, I'm glad you're getting to sneak in today. Let's see here. I thought I saw Ruth Hastings in here. Ruth, you here? I thought I saw Ruth. There is Ruth Hastings here. There's my bride. Let's see. Yeah, there's Ruth. There's Brian. Brian's counting the days down to his surgery. Let's see here. Who else we got out here? There's the Allens. Good morning, guys. And, and happy belated birthday to Tommy Allen. Tommy Allen. You know, uh, I, I heard, I heard all kinds of following a uh, 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 following out here, there was like 18 fire trucks headed south out of four city over the weekend, headed down toward Mariana. And I just thought to myself, they done lit Tommy Allen's birthday candles on his cake. And they're having to have all the help to put them out. Tommy, Tommy, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you had a good time with family. And I hope you got to go out and get some seriously good groceries. So man, oh man, oh man. I hope you had a good, good time. Happy, happy birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, Tommy Allen, this morning. Everybody say happy birthday. Y'all, we had, uh, seriously, we had great church yesterday. Good golly, man. The book of James, if you've never read the book of James or just really, uh, you know, got into the middle of this thing, dive deeper into it, you've got to do it. But you need to be prepared because you're going to get smacked around. Um, uh, James is that book that you are going to need steel toed shoes. Because he's going to stomp all over you. I mean stomp all over you. All of them didn't make it one half. I'm so sorry, Tommy. I am so sorry. Well, I am I am glad that you got to spend quality time with the ones that, that were there. Well, let's see here. Let's go ahead and let's read our morning Bible verse. Because I got all kinds of things to chit chat about. Our morning Bible verse is really, really good today. It is out of Psalm. It's Psalm 147. Psalm 147, verse 3, as we are looking at finding peace through pain. Finding peace through pain. The psalmist writes this. Psalm 147, verse 3, he said, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Or we can also say the, their sorrows. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds sorrows. But I, we can't just leave this. We have to look at verse 4, okay? 147.4, okay? This is going to tell you how great God is, how majestic God is. Psalm 147 verse 4. This is God. You ready? He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. That's our God, y'all. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. And to that, I say hallelujah and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That's the God we serve. Uh, very good, Denny. Thank you so much for posting all of that information. That is all kinds of surgeries that's coming up. So, uh, folks, if you might want to write that down so we do not miss any of those, okay? Go ahead and write those down. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Denny. I so appreciate that. Today is soup kitchen for Miss Denny, too. It's Monday. So I know where Miss Denny is. Good morning, Johnny Fletcher. All kinds of people beginning to snip in and snap in. Hey, let's talk a little bit about some things. We've got to some things I want to chit-chat about. Uh, over the weekend, uh, over the weekend, COVID numbers that came into the state of Arkansas, 4,002. That was what was recorded Saturday and Sunday. But, the, you know, the thing that, that really has got me uh, yesterday alone, Yesterday alone, there were 33 new additions in hospitals, 33 new additions uh, in hospitals. But the one number that has gotten my attention this morning is that yesterday, uh, of the number, there were 125 new cases in children age 0 to 10. 
uh, that kind of that kind of made my ears stand up. So that uh, that is exactly where that's at. So, guys, just be careful. Social distance. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. And if you're comfortable and feel like it, wear a mask. Even if you're vaccinated, wear a mask. Okay, that is your choice. Um, and we just want you to be, use caution. Just be careful. We don't want to see any anybody sick. So just be careful with that. Well, folks, if you have been watching and keeping up with the uh, 2020 Olympics, which we are in the middle of 2021, that is just mind boggling to me how they have lost a year. Uh, the Olympics has wrapped up in Tokyo. And we, I've got the medal count in front of me. Uh, the United States killed it in total medal count and in each of the, the, uh, the, the medal categories. The uh, USA had 39 gold. They just beat China. China had 38 gold. So USA had 39 gold, 41 silver. Uh, China had 32. That would have been the next one. And then USA had 33 bronze. And China had, uh, uh, China had 18, but uh, the folks out of Russia had 23. We had a total of 113 medals for, the, for uh, the United States, 113 totals, and the next closest one was 88. And so, uh, to say the least, USA was massively dominant, and I say praise the Lord, for our athletes and for their ability to do that. The thing that, uh, if you remember on Friday, we talked about uh, the lady Allison Felix. She had won her 10th medal in her career uh, in track and field, and that made her the most decorated female uh, in all of track and field history. She tied Carl Lewis, who was the most decorated male track athlete. They both had 10 over the weekend in her final event, y'all. She was part of the 4x400 relay for women, and they won gold. And she has now 11 medals. She is the most decorated track and field athlete in history. 11 medals. She is competed in four Olympics, and this time as a mom, and, and her little girl was there with her. So Allison Felix killed it in track and field. So way to go, all USA athletes. Now, if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, thinking it right, this winter we'll have the Winter Olympics. Is that right? I think that's right. Uh, in four years, in four years, the next Olympics will be in Paris, France, uh, it will be in France, and then in eight years, in eight years, it is coming to the United States. It is going to be in Los Angeles. So uh, that is the next eight years of Olympics. Uh, I've read this morning, and I and I have just read the headlines. I do not know anything about it. I have got to uh, wade into it. But Facebook has launched a new prayer tool for uh, religious communities. Now, that's, that's all they're saying. That's all the headlines that I've seen. Again, I have not had time to dive into it. Hi, Ms. D. How does things up on Ramsey Hill? Y'all survive all that company yesterday? But a Facebook prayer tool, I don't know what this is. I don't know if, you know, they've had the different emojis for prayer. You know, they've had the praying hands. They've had the raised hands. And there was something else, and they did this back, uh, you know, a year ago in March when the pandemic hit, and everybody was was launching these these broadcasts. But this is something totally different, uh, a new prayer tool. So if uh, if you guys get a chance and and see that and read that, okay, you might want to uh, uh, take a look at that because I I can guarantee you I'm going to be looking at it and uh, see if we can use that uh, as a tool for uh, the ministry here. I, I, again, I don't know. I mean, if it's viable, we're going to look at it. And uh, and if not, then we will just keep on moving and all that good stuff. Well, let's see. What else we got here? Oh, yeah, the New Orleans Jazz Fest, okay? The New Orleans Jazz Festival, that is their big, big thing of the year, has been canceled again in New Orleans. This is the second consecutive year uh, due to the rising numbers of covid in uh, Louisiana. So the jazz festival is not going to happen. Uh, and if you remember right on Friday, I think it was Alan Weddington that shared with us that it was National Catfish Month. And let me just say that the preacher was treated. 
and 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 uh, uh, I, all I can say is thank you ten thousand times. Uh, Larry and Pam Jones called us and wanted to go out for catfish on Friday night, and let me just say it was on point. We went to the island, went to Catfish Island, and oh, I mean, as Jerry Clow would say, oh, it was just so good. Just, whoa, it was amazing. So good. Denise and I had fried catfish, and uh, Dr. and Miss Jones, they had Cajun grilled catfish on that bed of rice pilaf, and it was just, it was glorious. I'm going to try that next time I go. I am going to try it. It looked amazing. So thank you again, Larry and Pam. That was a tremendous treat for us. Uh, it was a break uh, from studying, just kind of got out of the house and kind of cleared the mind, and I went back and did all kinds of of good stuff. But yes, 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 it is National Catfish Month, so get out and do something. Hey, I read this morning. Uh, let's see. Hey, what we got here? Carol, Carol, what you doing? What you doing? Let me let me read. This is this is my buddy from from North Ohio. Can't stay along. Just wanted to thank you. Insert sarcasm for sending Arkansas dew points to <laughs> today through Friday. The forecast to be in the mid seventies, which is beyond tropical. You know that is kind of odd for Northern Ohio this this time of year. It really is. Uh, uh, we are going to be, our air temperatures are going to be in the mid 90s all week uh, through Thursday, and we will definitely see uh, distinct triple digit heat indexes in the Delta all week long. It's going to be a blessed sauna. I mean, hot. That's what I'm saying, guys. Y'all got to be careful. If you go outside, you cannot monkey around. You got to be careful. Got to drink lots of water. Stay hydrated. Take breaks. Enjoy. Enjoy, Miss Carol. Enjoy that cold temperature. I, hey, I would take 70 degrees and that humidity on how today over what we're going to have. I mean, make no mistake about it. But you know, and, hey, and y'all, I, I need to hear from all y'all. Uh, and, and I've talked to Denise about this all weekend long. Uh, there are large patches of my yard dying. I guess it's because of lack of water, lack of moisture. Are y'all's yards dying? Uh, I mean, just big old patches of y'all, just, yeah, just brown, just full. It, it's like it's the end of the season brown. And, uh, and and I know we're not supposed to have that this early. So are y'all seeing that too? Uh, man, it is all over my yard. Which I'm not going to complain a whole lot. That means I won't have to mow it as much. But man, oh man, I mean, just seriously, I'm going to look out down there. And it's not green like normally. It's just, just dirty brown. It's nasty. So, mm, 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 mm. guys, I read something this morning. And for those of you who like to swim, you know, those of you who like to go to the beach and get in the ocean, do, do y'all like to go to the beach? I thought you had, oh, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, same here. We checked for army worms, but found none. Yeah, we don't have any of that, Pam. I mean, at all, it is just, it's ground here. Let's see, feels like temps will be in the 90s. Probably a cool front for y'all. Absolutely, Miss Carol. Absolutely, Miss Carol. Absolutely. All right. How many of y'all like to go to the beach and just, you know, you know, walk in the sand, get your toes in the water, maybe play out? Maybe you go on to the Gulf Coast, you know, down around Panama City or Mobile or, uh, you know, Orange Bay or, you know, something along the line. Gulf Shores. That's, that's a big popular place. Gulf Shores. Anybody like to go to the, go to those beaches? You like to do that? Maybe, maybe you know, roll on down to uh, Tampa, St. Pete, go to the other side, go to uh, Daytona. Uh, anyway, anyway, I've got something just for y'all, okay? Just for y'all. Uh, hold on, hold on. Ah! You! Y'all okay? Man, holy cow. Oh, boy, that'll mess a brother up right there. Hold on, let me let me let me give, give me another one. Luke. Denise, you okay in there? Whoo, Denise about fell out of her chair right then. Oh my God! All right, that was a humdinger. All right, for all you people, go to the beach, okay? All you people, go to the beach. This is a for real headline this morning. A for real headline. No kidding, okay? A teenager in Florida, somewhere down, down, uh, and I don't even know if it was on the Gulf side or, or on the, uh, the, uh, Atlantic side, on the east side. Wait a minute. Got to get up. Yes, you do. 
Okay, some somewhere down down close down in, in Southern Park, a teenager was swimming, you know, out off the beach. Okay, and a teen, I, I, y'all, I'm not making this up. A teenager was bitten by an unknown animal in the water. They don't know what it was, but it was so bad that the teenager had to be airlifted off the beach to a big big hospital. Yeah, for real. A teenager in Florida bitten by an unknown animal in the water was airlifted. Folks, I don't get in the water, y'all. And that's just another w- reason why I don't do it. I, I just, and there are things in the water that we have no concept of. Okay. I mean, the, the, the ocean is the greatest unsport, unexplored territory of the planet. And that we have no idea what's in that water. We have no idea what's been in there for, I mean, since, since the flood, y'all. I mean, it's gone. Yeah, let me give me clean the lens up. Okay, so for real. And speaking of fish in the water, okay, I sent this to Dr. Jones last night. And again, you cannot make this stuff up. Y'all need to Google this to actually see this, okay? Y'all, y'all ready? Ready. In North Carolina, in North Carolina over the weekend, a fish was caught. Guys, I've seen a picture of this thing, okay? A fish was caught with human-like teeth. You just got to Google this. In North Carolina, a fish was caught with human-like teeth. That is the weirdest looking dude I have ever seen in my life. I mean, yeah, it, it's like you, you took out great granny Gertie's, you know, false teeth and stuck them in a bass, you know? I mean, it is the craziest looking thing I have ever seen in my life. And I said that to Larry Jones last night. I said, you need to catch you one of these dudes right here. I, I mean, if you were to catch that thing and mount that on the wall, people would swear up and down that was a joke. That's how bizarre that thing is. So, uh, like I said, we don't know what's in the waters. You are not catching this fat preacher in the water at all. Not happening. I'm not going to happen. Today, today is national. Th- boy, I'm, I am all up in this. I mean, I am all up in this. Most of y'all are too. Today is National Book Lovers Day. National Book Lovers Day. So, uh, hey, spend some time in a book today, all right? Spend some time in a book. Not only your Bible, but spend some time in a book today, okay? National Book Lovers Day. And, and, y'all, we cannot go through the day without talking about food. Today is National Rice Pudding Day. National Rice Pudding Day. Who likes rice pudding? Man, I love rice pudding. But, you know, I I can't find it the way I I like it. I got real spoiled. When uh, when we were in Ohio and and, uh, I was working at the university, every year we had uh, one of the biggest events of the whole year well, something we called an international dinner. And we had a big international student uh, population. Big, big, big. And, uh, I mean, they were coming in for international business. And uh, every year, we would have our students would go in and work with our chefs and create uh, natural foods from their homeland. And, and, and every year was different and it was unbelievable. Now you ate some of the most bizarre things you ever thought about eating, but it was always good. Now, now you might not like it, but I mean, the quality was really good. And those students were so proud of their work and it was just a, it was a good thing. It was the, the, the highest attended event, uh, of the year outside of, uh, year in graduation. It was just massive. We would pack the place. And one year, one year, I, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the students from Japan or Taiwan, and I and I can't remember which one, but they made rice pudding, and and they made it in, and y'all are gonna think I'm I'm lying, but they made it in like a ten gallon bucket. I mean, this thing was massive. Uh, well, it was the only thing on the table. That's how big it was. And there was more rice pudding that you would think that would feed Ohio. And folks, 
I got one bite of that and I wanted to jump smack in the middle of it. It was amazing. Amazing. And I fell in love with rice pudding right then. And I have not been able to find that taste since. Now you can get it packaged, you know, here at the stores. You know, you can go back into the to the cooler area, you know, where they got the the uh, the, the the yogurt and stuff like that, and you get rice pudding, and it's good, okay. But I'm talking what we had at that international dinner was home run good, just just amazing. And so, if you've got a good rice pudding recipe, uh, get that out there. Let's share it. Uh, uh, I'd love to look at. It. I'd actually learn. I'd like to learn how to make it and make it make it good. Uh, so uh, I would I would love good rice pudding recipes. So uh, let's go ahead and get that out there. So today is National Book Lovers Day and National Rice Pudding Day. All right, what's it? All kinds of things going on on the chat today. Uh, when we get off this morning, I have got uh, a meeting in Wynn. I have got uh, to meet a couple pastors there, and I got to do some things at the associational office. I got to swing by the church. I left something yesterday morning, so I got to go back by and swing by the church. Actually, I think Dr. Jones is there this morning already with our uh, sprinkler folks. Uh, so he is there getting things done. Uh, if you were unable to make it to church yesterday, or if, uh, uh, if you called us online, we want to encourage you to make sure that you send in your tithes. Uh, make sure that, uh, that you do not fail in the, the giving of your tithes. And you can send that in to P.O. Box 785 right here in Fourth City. That's 72336. Or you can go to our website, lovemyrbc.com, and click on online giving. We want to encourage you to always be faithful. Even if you don't attend church, if you're unable to get out and go and you only catch services online, we want to encourage you to be faithful. And to give, that is a major part of worship. It's giving back to the one who's provided everything for them. And so don't neglect the tithe, okay? Don't neglect that. So go ahead and get that in. LoveMarvacy.com and click on online giving. We will sure enough appreciate that. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter 8. We're going to... Uh, we're going to have a good time this morning, but it, it, it's one of those things to where there's just, uh, there's not a lot of eventful things happening, you would think. Uh, if you remember last week, we said that it was long thought that the actions of chapter 8 took place before the actions of chapter 7. Y'all remember that? Because it talked about David getting rest and, and about all of those things that he had done. And so all that we're going to see here in chapter 8 is David's wars. He's literally taking the battle to uh, the, the other nations that's around Israel in, in order to conquer them. And he is setting up his administration. So this is, this is big, big, big stuff coming Coming in chapter 8, uh, matter of fact, the title in my Bible uh, talks about David's uh, further conquest. And so we all know that, that David was huge in battle. He was great. He was a great, great warrior. He was a great leader in battle. Um, the, the men had no problem following him and doing whatever he, he asked them to do and led them to do in battle. He was good. And so as we start in, it, this is going to be one of those things. It's going to be kind of bloody and gory, okay? So just you, you just got to understand this is what's taking, taking place here. But David is, is, is conquering these other nations that are enemies of Israel. And, and he, is, uh, he is that brass, bold, dominant leader, and he has no problem you know, taking on even the bigger nations. And we're going to see, as in through the text for this week, that he's going to be highly victorious in what he does. But it, it's all done for Israel. This is not for David's pat on the back. This is not to say, look good, David. This is all for Israel. So as we start, we're only going to look at two verses this morning, okay? But we need to understand the magnitude of what these two verses are. So let's go. It's chapter 8. 
in the book of 2 Samuel, and we are going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Let's look at verse 1. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines. Oh, look here who he's going after. Now, these are the ones that he tried to make himself a part of. You remember that? This is the ones that when he was totally... Uh, you know, on the run, getting away from, you know, King Saul, he actually went to be a part of the Philistines and he tried to be a part of the army. Uh, they wouldn't let him do that. And, and uh, we know that the leaders gave him the city of Ziglag there in the Philistines. And so David is highly familiar with the Philistines and the army and their, their, their practices the Philistines is also one of the mightiest armies in all of the land at this time. So let's, let's understand this. Scripture says, After this it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and, you ready? And subdued them. In other words, he conquered them. He won the battle. But now let's look at this next sentence in verse 1. It says, And David took Metheg Amah, from the hand of the Philistines. Okay. Now, unless you rip back the covers on this, you're not going to know what or where Methagama is or what it is. Do you remember the massive city of the Philistines called Gath? Gath was their 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 their, their central location. This was their almost their capital city, if you will. Okay, that was the city of Gath. That's where David went. Y'all remember that? This is where David went when, when he was on the run from Saul. Gath was also the home of Goliath. Remember that? The giant from Gath. Okay, Methagama is another name for Gath. So David didn't go into the little rural communities David went to the capital. David went to the heart of the Philistine nation. David attacked the Philistines and he subdued them. Look here. And he took Metheg Amah from the hand. Now, y'all, the Philistines gave Israel fits for years. It was also the Philistines, you remember? The Philistines that killed Saul and Jonathan and Jonathan's two younger brothers. So the Philistines had a hatred, I mean a, a throwdown hatred for Israel. And so this was a huge, huge time, a huge victory for David and the Israeli army. And he had no problem going after that, okay? I mean, I mean, when David became king, okay, while all this is going on, the Philistines are consistently attacking Israel and they are consistently taking the territory, okay? I mean, they're growing, they're, they're massive. But now that David is in charge and now then that the north and the south are together and we know how big that army is and we know how strong and how fortified they are and they're now living in Jerusalem, that's the hub, that's the throne of David that's there. Y'all, there was no stopping David. And so he went right after that. And he now is going back and he is reclaiming the territory that enemies like Philist the, the Philistines had taken. And he goes after the big boys. And he went after the city of Gath or what is listed here as Methegama. Same thing. Okay, same thing, so we don't want to get lost in that. So, he's now in the wars. He's now, uh, it's almost like retaliation. In other words, we're, we're taking back what's ours. And so this is what he does. Look at verse 2. Then, so this is after he got the Philistines, then he defeated Moab. Now, the, we're talking about the, you know, the, the mighty Moabites here. These were great warriors, Okay. Now let's let's just keep reading this. This is a very interesting, a very interesting verse. Okay, then he defeated Moab, forcing them down to the ground. I mean, there was no compromise. He tore them up, forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. 
Now, what he done was he took the men, okay? He took the men and he divided them into two lines, okay? With two lines, he measured off those to be put to death and with one line, those to be kept alive. Now, here's how that worked. And this was a, this was a procedure that was done pretty much in, in the, the, the rule of conquering. When you went in, but it, if you did not want to slaughter everybody, then this is pretty much how you done it. And so on, in one line, they would put two men for every one man in the second line. They would divide two and one, two and one, two and one, two and one. Uh, I don't know how they were chosen. I, I don't know who made it to the line with two in it or who made it to the line with one. I don't know that. But that was a procedure that opposing armies did when they conquered territories, but they didn't want to completely eliminate them. And, and what it did was he put all the men, two and one, two and one, two and one, okay? And then if you were in the line where there was two, you were executed. Only those men, or the one, two and one, two and one, only those with the one. So in other words, he killed two out of every three men was the procedure. Two out of every three men in the land of Moab was executed. Now this is pretty harsh. But the thing is, is that he didn't want to totally get rid of them. Okay, that he was not led to do that. But what it did do, and let's just keep reading. It says with two lines he measured off those to be put to death, and with one line, or one full line, those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and they brought tribute. Okay. God wanted Israel to be so blessed and so strong that the other nations were, I guess we can use the word taxed here, taxed by Israel, which uh, was, was them recognizing the strength and the power of Israel, okay? They were the servants. They did whatever they wanted to do. Now, Debbie, you have made a great point, and that's exactly where I'm going. We have to remember that David's great-grandmother, Ruth, was indeed a Moabitess, okay? She was indeed a Moabite. So what, what, what went on here, okay? What, what's going on? You see, it seems as though I probably, I probably need to get another swig of coffee for this one. Now, not only... Not only was David's great grandmother Ruth a a Moabitess, but if you remember back in 1 Samuel 22, okay, David took his mom and dad into uh, uh, the, the land of Moab and put them under the care of the Moabites. Okay, y'all remember that? I mean, he trusted them to watch over them because he was on the run from Saul. And he didn't want anything, uh, you know, to happen to his parents. And so he entrusted them with the Moabites. Y'all remember that? That's back in 1 Samuel chapter 22. Okay. This verse, verse 2, seems so out of place. Not because of what he done, but it's what he done to who? You know, now if he'd have done this to the Philistines, you know, nobody would have thought another, you know, another thing about it. If he'd have done this to another country or, or whatever, nobody would have thought a thing about it, but he did it to the Moabs, okay? Something was wrong, okay? Now, we do not have documentation on this, okay? In other words, it's not going to be found in Scripture, okay? But many theologians believe that the reason David was so harsh on the, the land of Moab was because that, again, this is all sure theological speculation, okay? It is long thought that the Moabites either killed or very grossly mistreated his parents, and they did not take good care of them. And it all got back to David. And when you 
put that thought pattern over it, then that really makes sense as to why this becomes so harsh. Now, again, we don't have that in concrete. And so please, please understand that. I'm, I'm not saying this is facts, but I'm saying this is long thoughts, uh, you know, in theological circles that David's parents were, you know, abused, mistreated, tortured, okay? Uh, or they were, you know, even executed by the Moabites. And that's what just turned David up. But uh, whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, he took care of business, not only with the Philistines by taking on the city of Gath and winning, subduing it, and but now by taking on and winning the Moabites. So the wars of David, the further conquest of David have started. But we are not going to see anything until we get into the next two or three verses because it is about to get some kind of vicious. And so you definitely don't want to miss that. And then later in the week, when we get to the end of this chapter, we're going to see David begin to sit up his, his administration as to who gets to do what. I mean, you got to remember, we're still into that, uh, that area to where he is still in Jerusalem. You know, he's in Jerusalem and he's, in, and he's establishing that kingdom. And so now he's got to put people in place. Uh, to do their job so that he can trust them to do this so he can go on and, and basically be the king. Okay, And so we're going to see that all toward the end of the chapter, and you do not want to miss that. Guys, that is all I have got for this incredibly hot Monday. Please be careful if you go outside. You do not want to get overheated. You don't want to have to go to the hospital for heat exhaustion or for a heat stroke. All right? If you need me, please, please reach out. You can call me. You can message me. You can text me, whatever the case may be. Same thing with Gloria. We are right here for you. I am going to be out and about here soon. I'll get to, get, get to those meetings, get some things taken care of. But just know one thing. I love you guys so very much. I'll be right back here first thing tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., Lord willing, as we continue chapter 8. And then tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Dr. Jones will be here for our online Sunday school class. That's all I've got, guys. Love y'all tons. See y'all in the morning. Bye-bye.